Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We are here in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and I am joined on the show by one of the country's or continent's most influential women. She is the head of marketing at METL. She's also an author and a motivational speaker with the, with the goal to empower women in their professional and personal lives. You might have already guessed it. I am with Sister Fatima Dewji, who is on a mission to help us all live life on our own terms. Sister Fatima, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for having me. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure um, to be on your show. Uh, I've watched a few of your episodes and I have to say that I'm you know, very inspired by the work you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So let's get started. Um, I want to start where... Uh, starting from your educational days, okay. so maybe post-secondary uh, school, like starting from okay. university. Okay. And I want to focus on what happened after in your journey with right. METL. Okay. So I graduated um, from Georgetown University uh, in 2010. I graduated with a degree in finance and management. Okay. Um, and uh, I came back to, to Dar um, and I had taken a summer to study Arabic. Um, in Egypt mm -hmm. and uh, because we were, um, Georgetown is known for its School of Foreign Service. So, you know, we had a lot of uh, speakers there and I, I was becoming very interested in Middle Eastern studies. Mm. So I came back and I said, you know what, this, this whole, you know, finance is not going to really get me excited. Um, I'm going to switch careers. Okay. Um, and I'd already applied to Oxford, I already got in and I wanted to go and study Middle Eastern studies. So. Um, I came back and I started working in the finance department at the at the East Coast Oils Division. Mm. And I remember it was just um, something that I just did not enjoy at all. Okay. Um, I was it was I was not cut out for it. I, I was miserable to say the least. Wow. Um, and yeah, I just said to myself that, look, I can't keep doing this. And so anyways, you know, I think that one thing that the way that I, we've been raised is even if you don't like it, you have to, you know, if you make a commitment, you have to continue doing yeah, it. Yeah, just persevere. Right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I kept doing it, I kept doing it. And what I learned is that I started taking interest in other aspects, right? So while I was handling finance, I started studying the production um, line. I started studying the sales part of it. I started mm. studying, you know, just the market trends and, and sure. consumer behavior. And I realized that we were all about pushing products um, into the market. Right. And basically there was no pull from the end consumer. Mm. There was no pull because there was no marketing. OK. Right. Um, okay. And while this, you know, while you're looking at multinationals who are marketing at that time, um, a lot of homegrown companies didn't believe in it. So, you know, I just I said to myself, OK, like I can do this, but let me also start thinking of ways to market. I remember mm. I took a small office um, and I was sharing it with a few people. And single-handedly, I said, let me just set up a marketing, marketing division. I had one designer at that time. Right. And just slowly, slowly, I built the division because I started to realize that how fundamental marketing was to just give your brand a personality, to just, you know, sort of have the consumer pick you over your competitors, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I guess uh, I got so into it that... Um, I forgot about my you know, Middle Eastern yeah. studies <laughs> and uh, yeah. I decided to stay back and since then we've grown you know, as, a, as a team and uh, we've grown as a, as a brand. You know, within so METL? Within METL, yeah. yes. Um, and then you know, I guess a few years later, it was maybe two or three years after I was, you know, just, you know, I was, I was doing marketing but there was no fulfillment in my life. You know? I, I wasn't happy. You know? and I'm the type of girl, I think that, um, you know, I, the happiness that I was looking for, it didn't really come from like, you know, going on a holiday or like being with my friends, you know, it was just, okay. yeah, there was just this void in my life, you know, and, um, and I, and I remember cause I, I take on a management course and, you know, I remember, um, there was a professor, his name is Professor Beast and he walked into the class. It was our first management class. And he said, hey, guys, you guys want to know how to be successful and happy. Yeah. And so, you know, we're all like sitting there. OK, like we're like scrambling for our pens and we're like, OK, you know, we're going to yeah, learn absolutely. like how to be successful, yeah. you know. And he said, um, in order to be successful and happy, you have to find a 
purpose that is greater and higher than yourself no, and no, make no, a difference no. in the lives of others. And so I guess um, I just realized that I'm so blessed and I was so lucky because I come from a family where, you know, I was um, provided so many opportunities. Um, I played golf competitively, you know, and it's costly, costly sport. Yeah, absolutely. You know? um, yeah. And so I guess I realized that, look, it's not all about me. I have to do something to sort of, it's not even give back, but rather to provide value, you know, for Add other value, people. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Um, and so... Yeah, I started, I started a, an empowerment show and what I would do is I would call um, women into, you know, because I, I sort of realized that I was one of the women that was lucky. And this wasn't a phenomenon that was like, like in our community mm. or I in the country. It was a, it's an international phenomenon that right, women are suffering or that we have it harder, or that we face challenges. And, but we're also resilient and we're strong and you know we are able to do so much and so i said okay i'm going to put women in the spotlight to s sort of inspire others with their stories yeah and um that's how my um empowerment forum started so this is um in addition to your corporate yes. your corporate life yeah. so yeah. you've got your your marketing role as head right. of marketing at metl yeah. and then this is what you do because i know you have a lot of passion projects right. that you do so i'm guessing this is one of them yeah. what else on top so, of this, do so you, it started do you do? as a as a women empowerment sort of initiative, and then it went to I started speaking at different schools, and then I realized that um, a lot of people, as my social media grew and my following grew, I realized that people um, were very interested in terms of um, in how to have like get business tips and marketing right. tips, you know, right. and uh, how to be successful in that area. So I started providing seminars and workshops on that, on, on public speaking. And so I started doing a lot of mentorship. Right. Um, and then I wrote my book because I thought, you know, um, and, and, and my book is, is not a book on marketing on, alone. Right. It's a story. I tell stories and, 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 and give lessons on, um, the journey I've been through and how basically, you know, the challenges I've met and the failures I've had, whether it's with business or in my life. And, um, you know, how you have to sort of move past that and look past that and just keep keep going, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, it makes yeah. sense. It's so interesting. Um, but, but with that in mind, yeah. obviously, you know, you've got your career side of things going. Right. You've got so much uh, happening outside the office, yeah. I guess, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I'm, I'm keen to know how, what your day looks like because okay. yeah, there's only so you, you clearly you, you wear many hats. So yeah. uh, what, what does a typical day look like for you? I'm sure it's an early start and a late finish. Yeah, so um, basically it's, uh, I wake up at around 6.30, you know. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm out of the house by 7.15. I, okay. I get to work, you know, I'll start checking my emails and I'll have some meetings. Um, and because I'm in marketing, my work entails me heading to the market, actually doing the market ah, research. Okay. Um, right. I'm a very inquisitive person when it comes to things like that. So I want to know firsthand what's going on with my products. Right. Um, so either I'll go into the market or I'll meet people or I'll start um, you know, sit with my team, create a campaign. I'm very interested in the branding aspect of things right. as well. Right. So, um, you know, uh, mind you, even when we came up with a mobile brand, yeah. um, it's uh, m my team and I had to come up with it because basically we were at a time where nobody knew it was all these um, sub brands were part of one whole brand, mm, right? Mm. And so people were drinking our water and having our wheat flour and like our oil, and you know they they didn't know it was all part of one company. Correct. And METL is usually you know um, mispronounced metal. You know it's not something that you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. and it's not a brand name. It's yeah. a company name. You of know? course. And so um, yeah, I just slowly, slowly realized that you know you know I have to come up with a brand. Came up with a brand. We launched the brand. Then we came up with a brand tagline mm. because. Um, you see, when you study marketing or you understand, rather, not study, but when you understand marketing, you realize it's not about you. It's about the consumer. It's right. about adding value to the consumer. And, then, yeah. and so our products touch the lives of people from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep, right? Because they're, yeah, yeah. they're in. We basically have 150 different products, you know, with right. various SKUs. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I... Um, 
so I do I do that. Sorry, deterring from that. No, I just no, got okay. so that's interested okay. in my marketing. No, no, it's, you're very passionate about it. Clearly, yeah. why not? Yeah. Um, and then at around five, I uh, I go work out. I run every single day okay. for about seven k, uh, seven kilometers. I okay. have I go run with my dog. Uh, by the beach nice. um, and I mix it up I do running I do kickboxing I do high intensity training right. um, it's very important exercise yeah, to my daily yeah. life um, uh, sometimes I'll go play golf not so much these days because I think yeah. the time is of course <laughs> yeah. but then I come back then um, I might have a few meetings here and there but then I start focusing more on my passion project and my the I work see. That so I that's do. kind of towards the evening night so yeah the- yeah, All so right. early start, very late nights, but I think um, one thing I have to say, and, and this is, um, I, I, I give a lot of advice to people, and, right. and something that I've learned is that it's good to move, keep moving, but it's also important to slow down. It's important right. to have a sense of awareness about what's going on in your life, what you're doing, reflection, you know, and these are, these are important things that now I've started to sort of um, include in my life you know it's not just go 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 yeah. you know once in a while sit back reflect where are you going what are you doing you know why are you doing what you're doing you know right. don't lose don't right. lose sight of these things is is that your moment of t- switching off or your I, your me time um okay so one of the issues i have is my brain doesn't slow down <laughs> it okay. um i'm like it's very it's it's crazy you know i it's funny because I have a lot of people coming to me and telling me how do I get my brain to just like you just know, shut like, off for a second. Yeah. No, they or want to know how do you keep going or like how oh, do I get way, yeah. things started, you know? Right. And I have the problem because I want to do so many things. Mm. Um, but you know, we're all we all have a limited right. amount of time in oh, a day. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Um, yeah. and so but again it's also very important to sort of slow down sometimes and just like Take the take the time to just breathe, you know. Enjoy yeah. life. Ha- be grateful, you know. Right. Things like this. These are these are important things that now I'm starting to include in my life, and I mm. I think I see a bigger change in just the way I am. But but what are those? Like, how do you switch? Is it travel? Is it uh, playing golf? Is so, it what is that that me time when you can reflect on all on all these things? Okay, so I so when I go running, um, ah, that's my me time. Okay, okay. I I don't I turn off my phone. Um, and I just, I, I run and it is, there's something about the sea that calms me down Absolutely. and you know, we, I'm, we're lucky cause I, I, I live by the sea. Absolutely. So, um, and then I have my, my cliff and I just sit there and then when I'm, I remember that like, you know, there, there are times when the day has been rough or I've been, you know, been through something and I just sit there yeah. and I calm down and I reflect and I just start counting all the things I'm grateful for. Absolutely. And I know it sounds cliche, but I do that because you become conscious of your day and right, your time. Right, right. The you self-awareness. Know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I hang out with my friends, you know, um, not as much as I'd like to because uh, yeah. if you want to get to certain places, there are certain things you have oh, to give sure. up. Oh, for sure. You have to sacrifice. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, the Saturday nights, Sunday nights, yeah, you know, yeah, where yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to, yeah. where you want to go out, but absolutely. you can't. Um, yep. So, yeah. Good, That's what good. I do. Um, well, in addition to that, you know, you've since we're we're getting a bit, a bit personal now. Right. Um, I as I was preparing for this episode, right. I did a bit of reading, and I noticed there was there was a, a part where you had mentioned that things weren't really going your way. Right. I guess in school or up until the age of fifteen, things weren't going the direction you wanted them to go in, and and something might have triggered at that point. Uh, can, you, right. can you walk us through that? Um, yeah. What was that scenario like and, and what triggered you to change, change courses right. um, and bring you to where you are today? So mm-hmm. growing up, I was always told I was an average student. Um, I was always told I was an average person. Um, and, you know, this is where I believe that, that self-belief and self-love is so important because you always have people telling you, the naysayers, people telling you you're not good enough, you're not going to get to where you want to. And um, I'd heard it for so long and I remember I was sitting in an assembly and my friends were going up to get their honor roll and I was like, what, like why am I not up there, you know, mm. and what's wrong with me? And I don't... I can't tell you exactly what happened because I, I really don't know. But I think part of genetics, I guess, because I come from a family that's just very like we're go getters. And part of just um, the idea that I always believe that you can do whatever you put your mind to up to today. 
I, I never studied marketing. I studied mm. finance and right. management. Right. Um, and this is something I talk about in my book that you can learn whatever you want. We have the internet now. We have everything at our fingertips. Absolutely. You can learn whatever you want to learn. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. And so um, I guess something flipped and I just said to myself that I don't want to be this person anymore. I don't want... I want to do the best that I know I can do. And that is much better than what I was doing. Right. Um, and so, yeah, things changed. Things just changed and, from there. And they changed. And, you know, despite what people think, and I, and I, want, I really want to, to emphasize this, is that people see me and they see these titles, right? You mentioned, you know, that I'm an author, you know, I'm a marketing director, I'm, I'm all these things. But they don't understand that it's that there's a process behind everything. Mm. You know, I, I deal with FMCG products. So I'm going to tell you that, you know, if you're drinking a soda, you don't know, I know the process <laughs> it went through to right, get to right. you, right? Um, whether, you know, you're watching a movie or whatever you're doing or a person that you admire, you don't know what it took for them to get to where they are. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I went through that hurdle in the last two years. I've gone through one episode of pain after another. Right. And... Um, you know, people look at me and they see this, okay, oh my gosh, this girl has it all together. She's yeah. got everything going for her. But I feel that, you know, um, authenticity in this day is, is important. And no, there are days I don't have it all together. I've gone through a lot in two years. But for some reason, I just kept moving. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I won't let you off the hook. We will go deeper into, okay. into your pain, okay. I guess. Um, okay. But... Uh, Clearly, you have a very uh, a stellar academic background, a stellar corporate background, a stellar family, uh, family reputation, um, and, and corporate life. Uh, is it? Do you think it's necessary to have these platforms? Because I'm sure there might be people out there who don't have these platforms, who don't have the ability yeah. to to have the education that you did right. or the work experience. You know, in the beginning, where, where you started off and, and, and the family and financial uh, backing or background as well. Yeah. Um, what, what message do you have for, for those people? You know, is there hope for them? Can they make it without these, these luxuries per, per se? Of course. I think that, um, I think an education, look, the educational system for me, it's not what you learn in school. I think it's mm. getting through school. It's the process right. of okay. getting through school, right? Yeah. Um, I think that that says, a, that says a lot about you as a human right. being, that you can get through a system and not just give up in the middle, Correct. right? Again, it's about the process, yep. right, of things. Yep. Um, as for my family background, you know, we grew up very military style, kind of, you know. Um, okay. My dad is a very strict so person. So he's a disciplinarian. Very yeah. disciplined. Wow. Um, I remember the, the time, you know, I was, he, you know, I grew up playing golf. I was playing golf at the age of six. And I remember I went to him and I'm like, I'm a girl. What are you doing to me? And he's like, I don't care. Like, wow. he's, yeah, he, he was like, I don't, I don't care if you're a girl. You got to do it, you know. Wow. And, um, and at that time, I was miserable because right. this my my life was go to school, come back, go play golf, yeah. come back, do my homework, come back. And then at night, we had a little net at that time. Right. And I just hit 200 balls every wow. single night just to practice my swing, right? Um, and it was tough. I, I had uh, no time to myself. I was constantly, you know, it was, ex it was exhausting. You know, you have madrasa, you have school, oh, yeah, you have absolutely. like so many things going on at the same time. But um, no, I don't think these things are important i think that you just have to have it in you to want to be or get to somewhere right. now right. i don't care if your goal is just to be happy mm. you know if that's your goal stop complaining okay if you just want to be a nine to five person right. and you're happy taking one or two holidays a year do 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 you Absolutely. right yeah. but if you really want to get somewhere where mm. or if your goal is to get to a certain position in your life or to like you know be the best right right you got to give up certain things Absolutely. Um, uh, i cannot i took my sabbatical last year i went to lebanon for two months um to study arabic and this was after two and a half years of not leaving the country because i was just right. working you right. know right. and in, during my sabbatical i studied arabic and i finished my book writing my book right, right. so you know Something's got to give. Well, yeah, no, I, yeah. I completely agree. Um, for, for many women, yeah. uh, maybe more so in this side of the world, but I'm sure right. it exists all over the world, their, their life is very, I guess I can say structured. 
Right. Um, you know, they'll go to school for the sake of having an education. But then yeah. after that, it's kind of, okay, well, settle down, get married. Well, I guess get married first, settle down yeah. and, and raise a family. Yeah. And that's kind of how their life goes. Now, I'm not saying there's something wrong with that, but clearly you didn't, or something about that structure didn't agree with you or you didn't agree with. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? What was it that, why didn't you go that way? I did. Um, <laughs> I did go that way. I, okay. I graduated from university. I started working. I got married. Okay. Um, I went through a lot of pain um, because I went through a very horrible divorce um, that I think uh, has changed me in the best of ways because I just realized um, so much through that pain. Right. Um, and yes, my my life has not, you know, on the on TV, on everything seems very flowery, right? Very well but, put together, yeah. <laughs> um, very well put together. But, um, you know, I, I, I did go through that route and not because I had to, but because I did find someone that I thought um, right. I could spend the rest of my life with, didn't Absolutely. work out. I, I um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I just think it's unfortunate because I think that um, parents, right? They don't, maybe maybe so more so on this side of the world, they don't, um, they look down on the girls, okay? It's, uh, okay. yeah. So I, I, I read a study, um, Sheryl Sandberg, you know, the CEO of Facebook, she yeah. talks a lot about this and she says that um, there was a study that was done where, uh, you know, when, you're, when a girl is speaking up when they're younger, you tell her she's bossy, but when it's a boy, he holds leadership qualities, mm, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's the way that you speak to your child when they're young. Um, it's the way that you sort of, the empowerment or rather disempowerment of your, your children. Um, and it can go both ways. It's both, it's for your, the boys and the girls as well. It's the, the guys you have to become successful so you can fend for your family. Right, right. It's I the same pressure. Yeah, and the, yeah. the, the girls, it's like, okay, you're gonna have an education, but I mean, what does it matter? You're gonna get married, someone's gonna take care of you, right? So it's a culture thing, It is I a guess. culture yeah. thing. Um, it's a culture thing, but the more that I read and the more that I see, I think it's just, I honestly do believe it's, it's a, maybe because, um, because it's highlighted more here, but I think it's really an international phenomenon, this whole idea right. that if you're a girl, you know, this is sort of, your life, you know, right. if you're a guy, then, you know, you have to have a family, take care of your wife and whatever. Right. Um, I, I think that I was, I was lucky because I grew up, you know, with four brothers. Um, right. I grew up in a family where my dad was all about education. He was, um, nice. he got us into golf and playing a sport when you're young um, does a lot for you. Right. Teaches you mental toughness, teaches you to Absolutely. be a team player, yep. teaches you to be a good loser. You know, these are, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. these are all fundamental things that will take you a long way. You know, resilience, just, you know, just so many things that you learn that yeah. then shape who you are. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, your brother. Yeah. Mo Deoji, the yeah. infamous Mo Deoji. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, you grew up with four brothers, yeah. him, him obviously being, being one of them. Yeah. Um, clearly, he, he, if not the whole family, is a household name right. uh, in, in, in this country and maybe even in the continent. Um, briefly, can you tell me the role they or he has played in, in shaping you to be who you are today? Um, I think that when, you know, when you come from a wealthy family, as they say, I think right. that a lot of times people assume you have life easy. Mm. Um, people assume that, you know, it's especially in this generation, it's the father does the work and then it's the kids kind of just like yeah, benefit from the money, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, in my yeah. family, it's not like that. Really? All of us work very hard. Okay. All, I have four brothers. Um, three of them are in the company. We all work extremely hard. We wake up very early. We're constantly, you know, hustling, as I Absolutely. like to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, watching that, I think that it gives you momentum and gives you... Mama also is not someone who just is in the business. He does a lot of philanthropy. He, he, right. he, he, right. he believes in making a change, you know, wherever. Right. And I think that I've learned these things from him and I've learned that to get to where you want to be, he wakes up 5, 5.30 in the morning, man. Right. Like, yeah. goes to bed late at night, you know, he um, works extremely hard. You know, all these things, you know, when you watch it happening yeah. in front of you, 
you learn from it, right? Yeah, you feed off of that yeah, energy, you feed I off guess. That yeah. Energy, yeah. Is there is there anything that that you wanna you wanna add? Something that I may not have asked you, or that you want that could benefit our, our audience? Um, I think that one of the biggest things, and I talk a lot about this in my book because I firmly believe in it. And yeah. you know, people tell me. Uh, what is success, right? Mm. Um, how do you become successful? Um, and I think that, first of all, you know, the magic of success, rather, is that when you believe in yourself and you value yourself, right. um, and you value who you are, uh, but then it's about the actual, the burst of magic happens when you um, understand that it's not all about you, that it's mm. about something bigger than you. Right. Um, like I said, in the last two years, I went through a horrible divorce. I went through my brother's kidnapping. And just a few months ago, I lost my best friend to cancer. Wow. Things people don't know, right? Of course, um, yeah, yeah. But it's been horrible. But I think that if it wasn't for um, the fact that I have a purpose that is bigger than just myself, right. um, I would have crumbled. You know. Um, also, whatever happens in your life, um, whether it's good or it's bad, it's all a teaching moment, you know. Oh, it's all Learn teachable. From, yeah, yeah. Yep. Learn Absolutely. from it, grow from it. You know, um, I know it's not at that time. I remember when when my brother got kidnapped. It was you know you couldn't be positive at that. There was nothing yeah. to be positive yeah. about. Yeah. Um, but I guess you know when you look at pain with hindsight, always try to think of how has it changed you. How how what have you learned from it. Mm. You know, and what can you take away from it? Right. I think that that's just, you know. Uh, excellent. <laughs> uh, no, I am so grateful that, you know, you, you shed some light on, on the tough times as well. You know, yeah. I know it's not easy yeah. to, to speak about these things. And, right. and I'm, I'm appreciative of that, that, you know, you've done that and, and all the, everything else that you shared. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I'm sure it adds a lot of value uh, to those who are watching. and. Right. And I'm very grateful that you took the time uh, to come to come on the show and yeah. and share your story with us. Um, so thank you, no, thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, today's episode. Uh, if you want to reach out to Sister Fatima, I will be putting her contact information at at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to reach out to her. If there's anything um, that you'd like to know from her or learn from her, she'll be more than happy. To, uh, to, to respond and, and, and communicate with you. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed today, today's episode, and inshallah, I will see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.